Hello everybody, this is Arcane31174 coming at you with another Minecraft video. Running with Super Max Speed! Somebody make that a thing, Super Max Speed. Now, you might remember from my last video that I just... Oh, sorry. You might remember from my last video that I talked about the Sacred Rubber Tree, complained about how unreasonably big it is, and maybe mentioned on the side the mining laser that kills you in creative mode and consumes 20,000 energy units per tick. You're probably wondering, how the hell do you generate 20,000 energy per tick? Well, it's easy. You just build about 200 million steam dynamos and, you know, line them up and fuel them all with coal and... Ah, I'm just kidding. No, you don't use steam dynamos. You use nuclear reactors. And, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. Well, it's probably... I'm going to split this into two parts. One part dedicated to the passive reactor and one part dedicated to the active reactor. Now... Over here, we have two reactors. Passively cooled reactor, actively cooled reactor. Extremely efficient, easy to build. Now, if you want some stats, here are the stats. Fuel burn-up rate, 0.095 millibuckets per tick. Energy, energy production rate, 7,700 redstone flux per tick. Now, if we look at this, it consumes fuel at a rate of 0.026 millibuckets per tick, which is much less and generates energy at a rate of 7,200 redstone flux per tick. So, while it doesn't generate as much energy, it consumes much less, fu much less fuel. And while this, while this one is simpler, this one is much more efficient. Much more efficient. Yeah, that's right. I said that right. But you will need to build one of these first, because the byproduct, the waste product of this is required in the crafting recipe for parts of this turbine. As weird as that sounds, that's how the mod works. So, let's go build our own reactor. What are you doing here? Get out of here. Alright, so... Oh, it's raining. Let me just switch the rain off. Okay, so... The blocks required for building a reactor are this. Reactor casing, eulorium, four graphite, four iron. Graphite is made by smelting coal or charcoal. Reactor glass, which can be used interchangeably with reactor casing under most circumstances, is reactor casing plus two regular glass. Eulorium fuel rod, eulorium, two graphite, six iron. Eulorium control rod, redstone, three graphite, eulorium, four casing. Controller, diamond, two eulorium, redstone, four casing. Power tap, four redstone, four casing. Access port, chest, piston, four casing. Now, we're going to build a reactor. Well, let's try dimension seven by seven by five. Okay, so now the frame is complete. The frame must be com the frame must be made out of reactor casing. You can't put a controller here. You can't put an access port here. It all has to be made out of reactor casing. That's just the way the mod works. Now, on the inside, you're going to want to put your fuel rods. I don't know if they work when they touch the outer edge. So, I'm just going to do like this. Now, you could put a fuel rod in the middle, but you really don't need to. So, you take these and you build them up to the top and put reactor control rods on top of them. These control, the control rods control how fast the reaction occurs. A higher percentage means a slower reaction, a lower fuel burn-up rate, lower temperature, and less energy produced. Then you want to stick a power tap somewhere. The power tap is where your wire goes. This is where the energy leaves the reactor. It's important. The controller turns the reactor on and off and monitors the stats. And the access ports. Intake and outlet. I really don't think you need two of them. I just like putting two of them. 
and then you can, I don't know, fill the rest with glass. Okay, you can see that the reactor has now become a multi-block. <clears throat> so, this means we can go to it and turn it on, right? Eh, actually, not really. You need to put some fuel in it. What kind of, what does it use? You need to get some eulorium. Eulorium is added to the world, is generated in the world as yellowite ore. You pretty much mine yellowite ore, or smelt it, or whatever, and you get yellowium dust, or something. Eventually, you, it turns into yellowium. You put it in the reactor. You turn it on. And the reactor works now. Now, notice a few things. The temperature is going up, the energy produced is going up, and there's a fuel burn-up rate. There's also level of radiation. Radiation doesn't really do anything, except slow down the fuel burn-up. So more radiation is actually better. Casing heat is, the higher the casing heat, the faster the fuel burns. I'm sorry, the core heat. The higher the core heat, the faster the fuel burns. The higher the casing heat, the more energy is produced. So we want to be able to transfer energy from the core to the casing. Why isn't it transferring more effectively? Because the reactor is filled with air. And air is a terrible conductor. Now, how could we make the reactor condu conduct heat better? You could fill it with liquid, like water. But in reality... I mean, in the in the game, not in reality, in the game, water is not as good a conductor as you might think. There are, there do ex there exist in this game better conductors than water. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the two best conductors that you can put into a reactor. First off is gelid cryothium. This is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to use. N not impossible, just very, very difficult to use in survival mode. You get it by magma crucible-ing cryothium dust. I definitely could have worded that better. Cryothium dust is made with a snowball, a piece of redstone, some nitre, and blizz powder. So how do you make blizz powder? You fluid transpose destabilized redstone into a snowball. Alright, that seems easy, but wait a minute. What the hell is niter? In order to get niter, you have to pulverize sandstone, and you only have a 15% chance of getting it. That is the only way to get niter. And when you pulverize sandstone, you only get two sand. So it's not like you can do this infinitely. You're going to run out of sand eventually. And if running out of sand means running out of niter, means running out of gelid cryothium. And you need two niter to make a bucket. And the worst part about gelid cryothium, well, aside from the fact that niter is impossible to get, is the fact that it doesn't stay where you put it. If you put water, if you put gelid cryothium here, it will actually drop to the lowest block. So you actually have to fill up the entire reactor. You can't just fill up the top level. With a liquid this rare and this difficult to manufacture, I call bullshit. Fortunately, there's another liquid that's just about as good. That's just about as good. In fact, it's so close to as good, you won't even be able to tell the difference. And that's Resonant Ender. And Resonant Ender is actually fairly easy to craft. All you gotta do is melt down four Ender Pearls. Now, I know what you're thinking, but wait a minute. Endermen are a rare mob, and ender pearls are a rare drop from that mob. There's really no way you're going to be able to... There's really very little in the way of... Um, you're not going to be able to get that many ender pearls, right? Believe it or not, there is a much easier way to get ender pearls than just going out and slaughtering random endermen. And I will show you how to do that in another video. Now... I've just filled up the reactor with Resonant Ender. 
Now, I also want to show you something cool that you can do with it. If you jump into Resident Ender, you teleport. It doesn't hurt, actually. So, you can... You can play around with that for a while if you want. But, I'm not going to play with it. I'm going to get to business. So, the reactor is complete. It's filled with Resident Ender. And if we turn it on again, we will notice... The heat, the core heat, and casing heat are at about the same level, and the energy produced is much greater than last time. I don't remember what the energy production was last time, but you could probably go back in the video and check. So anyway, that is how you create a passively cooled reactor. And you know what, if we want the uh, reactor to produce more energy, we can just turn the control rods down a little bit, look at the thing, and... More energy, more heat, it burns up more fuel, but if you want to burn less fuel, you can slow the reaction down. And that's how you create a passively cooled reactor. In the next video, I will show you how to create an actively cooled reactor and how to build a turbine. And that's it for now. Our See you later.